Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'd like to show you how to enter this song, Amazing Grace, from page 35 of the Time Workbook into NoteFlight. Let's switch over to our browser and go to noteflight.com. Once there, if you don't have a Create button in the upper left hand corner, just click on that orange button with the white note. Then click on the plus or Create button and tell it OK. The computer will create a grand staff. Since we don't need the base class staff for this lead sheet, click in the first bar. You can see a little gray bar to the far left side of the staff. Click on that to select the base clef. Type the backspace delete key and it will erase the staff. Alright, let's work on setting up the score. So most notation programs require that you set up the score at this point. In NoteFlight, you simply click where the title goes and type it in. You can also enter the composer and lyricist. Looking at the original, you'll notice that the music uses an italic font. In Note Flight, you click on the menu button in the top left corner, pull down to the score submenu, and choose formatting. When that dialog box comes up, there's a choice between the standard and jazz fonts in the general tab. Choose the jazz font and close that dialog box. Alright, I'd like to talk to you a little bit now about setting up the workspace. In order to make editing easier, I'm going to arrange the computer window so my preview source score is on the right and my note flight destination window is on the left. In preview, I hide my sidebar and type command minus a few times so that if it's possible, the entire score is visible. In note flight, I also type command minus a time or two so that my entire workspace is also visible. It takes a little bit of tweaking, but this will save time in the long run. Another of the setup items that is necessary before we can begin entering notes is to set the time signature. Notice the source score is in 3-4, but by default, NoteFlight created a 4-4 time signature. To set the time signature, type Command-A to select all. Click on the menu button, pull down to the measure submenu, and select set time signature. Set the time signature to 3-4 and make certain that the type pop-up is set to normal. When done, click OK. You will notice that the first bar in the source score is a pickup measure with one beat. We have to tell NoteFlight that we'd like a pickup measure for bar 1. Click in bar 1. Click on the menu button, pull down to the measure submenu, and select set time signature again. This time, specify that this is a pickup measure. I use the time signature to indicate how many beats I need. For one beat, I set the time signature to 1-4. If you need three eighth notes, set the time signature to 3-8. If you need five eighth notes, to 5-8, and so on. In this case, I just want one beat, so I select 1-4 and click OK. When I close my menu, the pickup bar is created exactly as I wanted. We'll also need to set the key signature for this piece. Notice that the source score is in the key of F, but by default, NoteFlight created the key of C. To set the key signature, type Command A to select All. Click the Menu button and pull down to the Measure submenu and select Set Key Signature. Choose the key signature with one flat and specify whether this is major, minor, or some other mode. Click OK and close the menu options. The key signature is set and we're ready to enter notes. To start entering notes, I like to display the duration menu. That way I can quickly change from 8 quarter and half notes. Click the menu button, select the duration submenu. The duration menu appears on the toolbar at the top of the screen. I check to make certain that the first note is going to be a quarter note. With the first rest selected, I can type into the score. To enter the first note, type the letter C. If NoteFlight puts it in the wrong octave, type Command Down Arrow. Next, type an F. It should be a half note, but it enters as a quarter note. Type the right bracket key to double the note value. The next note is an A, eighth note, but it also enters as a quarter note. Type the left bracket to halve the note value. Type the F and then A right bracket twice, then G, then F, right bracket once, D, C, right bracket once, C, F, right bracket once, A, left bracket once, F, A, right bracket twice, G, C, 
Right bracket wants to make it a half note. I will type a period to add a dot to the note and a comma to add a tie. I'll type C again to complete the tie. It is entered as a dotted half note. I'll type the period again to toggle the dot off. I'll go ahead and enter the rest of this without comment. Okay, I've completed verse 1 now. It just so happens that most of the rest of the piece is the same as what I've entered. I will click in the first measure, shift click in the last measure to select a song. I will type Command C to copy the music. I will click in the empty bar at the end of the score and type Command V to paste. There are a few differences between the first and second verses that I need to correct. Specifically, there are some triplets in the second verse that are not in the first. In order to enter triplets, I'll click on the first note, type the bracket to change it to a quarter note, type the number three so I can tell it that I want triplets in the space of a quarter note. Then I type the letters that I want, A, G, F in this case, and they're entered. I'll repeat that with all triplets. Toward the end of the score, you'll notice that there are two or three notes that are actually entered differently, maybe a third off of the original, and so you just click on those and use the up and down arrow keys to move them to the correct place. Okay, at this point, we need to enter the lyrics. I'm going to click on the first note that receives lyrics and type Control L. Note flight gives a flashing cursor beneath the note. You just type into the score the words that you'd like. You use the space or the hyphen to move to the next note for lyric entry. If you have a word that is to be sung across several different notes, you can use the underscore key or underscore button and keep typing it until you are advanced to the next note to receive a lyric. Jazz font is all uppercase, so doesn't matter too much if you type upper or lower case, but you want to keep it straight in case in the future you ever display it with a different font. One quick lyric tip before we leave this, when entering lyrics you should avoid overshooting the note on which you'll be entering the lyrics. In a perfect world, if you went too far, you should be able to backspace or left cursor to the previous note. In note flight, you must press escape, click on the note where the lyric should go, and re-enter lyric mode by typing Control L. I'll finish the rest of the lyrics without comment. This original score does not have slurs on the notes that have word extensions, but if you wish to enter those, just click on the first note and type the letter S. You can drag the handle of the slur so that it's attached to the note desired. Okay, there is one other lyric thing that we should talk about, and that is how to resize the lyrics. The size of the lyric in the jazz font is quite small. To correct that, click on the menu button, the score submenu and choose formatting. Under the text tab, set the lyric size to the desired size. The original was 11, I take it up to about 20. When the lyrics are in the correct size, it's much easier to proof them. Alright, we're going to move down and look at the bottom of the score. There's a little bit of score cleanup that needs to happen here. When a song starts with a pickup measure, it's necessary to end it with a measure that balances that incomplete measure. Click on the last measure. Click on the menu button, move to the measure option, and select set time signature. Tell the computer that this is a pickup measure needing two beats. It erases the notes that were in the bar, so you'll have to re-enter those by typing F in the bracket tool. Note flight, as it often does, creates an extra measure for you to continue composing into at the end. To erase it, click in the empty measure, click on the gray bar above the measure, and click the minus button on the right side of that gray bar. The next step in this project is to put the chords in. Click on the first note, type Command K, and type the name of the chord desired. You will type Command K for chords because Command C is for copy. Use the tab to advance to the next note needing a chord, and type the chord. As with the Lyric tool, do your best to avoid going too far because it's hard to back up. You'll have to reset the entry point by clicking on the note that needs a chord and typing Command K again. If you need to flatten the chord name, type the little b, which in the jazz font looks unusual, until note flight substitutes a flat sign. If you need a sharp, type the number sign. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to lay out the score so that it looks more like the original. 
First, I like to arrange the measures so that they have the same number in each system as the source. I'll click on the bar line at the beginning of the first measure that should be on the next system. Type in the enter key, like the carriage return on a typewriter or return key on a word processor. The following measure is moved to the next system. And the first system in the destination looks as it does in the source. Repeat this process for each system in the score. At the very end, you'll see a short three bars. Just click on the final bar line and drag it to the left. There is no ruler for specific measures, just drag it until it looks right. This layout that I just showed you, I did at the very end. But if this were a harder song, and if I didn't know the melody, I would probably have done the layout of the entire score before entering any notes. That way I could easily move my eyes from the source and the destination score and more easily keep my place. I believe this would also let me pick up the pace of my entry. Our lead sheet is now complete. Be certain to save this using the save button at the top of the score or just type command S. This file is saved in your NoteFlight cloud drive and you'll be able to open the score on any computer, phone, or iPad or other internet equipped device. The score will be saved using the name in the title field. If you click on the large note in the upper left hand corner and then click on my scores, you'll see the file. If you get a dialog saying, are you sure you want to leave the page, you probably forgot to save your work. You'll want to stay on the page and save before leaving. That concludes today's demonstration of how to enter a lead sheet into NoteFlight. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing your completed work.